Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy D, I assume. And uh, uh, let you know, I'm absolutely thrilled that you, at 17 years of age, have decided to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and to serve him by serving his people. There really is no greater calling in life than to do exactly what you're doing. I was in uh, college uh, pursuing a career in uh, nuclear physics and I have a degree in physics and mathematics but while I was in college I had uh, received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and although even today I follow science uh, with great interest why would I give my life to something for money or fame when I could give my life for something of eternal consequence and that's what you're doing and hats off to you I have a few thoughts I'd like to share with you uh, Jimmy and I'm making this um, video just for you whatever happens you almost always need to remember this that whatever happens God is able and he does work all things together for good you can get beat up you can get discouraged or something even that God works it together for good so you don't give up because God needs a man and the problem is not are there any males around are there any men uh, men who are willing to go through the preparation process men who are willing to pay the price and get the experience that they need to be effective ministers for the Lord Jesus Christ excuse me a moment there you go <clears throat> we think of King Saul he had everything going for him while he was humble, but when he became lifted up and uh, thought uh, he was uh, the great man, um, God had to replace him. And it's interesting that God sent Samuel to the house of Jesse to, the Lord said, I have provided me a king there. In other words, there was somebody there who had gone through a preparation process that was ready and uh, the uh, father was supposed to invite all the boys there. You know the story. And uh, all the boys were lined up except David. Why? They didn't think he had the, the potential to become a king. He's just a shepherd boy up in the hills someplace. So the father didn't say, hey, wait, let's go get David. Or even the brothers say, Dad, where's David? No. They didn't think he had the potential and sometimes people may give you that impression that they don't think you've got the potential. <laughs> Do it anyway. And uh, when David was up in those hills taking care of those sheep, he didn't waste his time complaining about his lot in life. You can be sure he did slingshot practice up there. and. Um, was uh, getting ready, unknown to him, he was getting ready for one day to face that giant. He also did some singing and worship up there with his harp, I'm sure, and maybe even wrote some psalms. In other words, he wasn't wasting his time. Uh, he was being prepared in not a theological uh, seminary or a divinity school, but in the school of life. And uh, divinity school and theological seminary and so on can be helpful, but you got to have more than that. You got to have something inside of you that uh, that will augment, but it won't put you where God wants you to be. And so other people sometimes they you know they look better, they have better education, they have more money, they have physical strength, <coughs> but that's not what God is looking at. God is looking at your heart, Jimmy. And um, 
bless God. I believe the Lord is very pleased with you and um, will put you through a wonderful, wonderful, exciting life um, because God is looking at the heart. And so it's interesting that when David was ultimately called down from the hills and anointed, he was anointed right in front of his brothers and right in front of the fathers, those naysayers, negative talkers, had to watch their brother, whom they didn't think had the stuff to be anointed by the prophet Samuel. And uh, after being anointed, David didn't think of himself a big shot or um, got self-inflated. What did he do? He went back to taking care of sheep. And he lived a relatively unknown, unheralded life until he met his biggest enemy. And when he met Goliath, he was prepared with a sling and some stones and faith in God. And uh, you can't be jealous of what others have. Use what God gave you. I mean, David couldn't use Saul's armor, Saul's shield, Saul's sword. He, he said, I, I, I don't work with those. He worked with what he had, a sling and a stone, and actually was ultimately more effective than all the armor because he did it with faith and trust in God and with a whole lot of courage too. So, my friend Jimmy, I look forward to meeting you when I come back to the States, but I, I want to encourage you to um, hang tough, go through the process, pay the price. It's worth it a thousand times over. It's, uh, it's worth it. And um, years later, um, David became indeed the king. He was anointed for it much earlier, but he had to go through a process and he didn't play politics to try to get into the kingship. He let God put him there in God's time, and it's worth it. And I sometimes say, folks, you will do tomorrow what you are preparing for today. So God bless you, and uh, again, trust to meet you. Greetings to your dad. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.